So our first presenter this morning is Daniel Quijano. Yes, woohoo! Um, from the Small Business Resource Collaborative. <laughs> thank you, Daniel. Thank you. So thanks to everybody who came out this morning. A special thank you to Pros and Roasters for making sure I don't die standing up here this morning. Um, mornings are not my strong suit, but uh, we do what we have to do, right? So uh, uh, I guess first thing I'm going to start off by introducing a little bit about the SBRC, who we are, what we do, um, and then kind of as Sonia mentioned, I'm going to switch it up a little bit because I want to talk about a little bit, something a little bit different, uh, which is what we've learned in the process of our work uh, since the beginning of construction. So with that being said, the Small Business Resource Collaborative is um, a group that was brought together. We're a small group of consultants that was born out of the art construction project. How many of us have heard of what's going on with the construction on Central? Most of us, right? So... Very long story short, most people realize that when the construction started, uh, that was a decision that was made by people in the city. And uh, once that decision was made, obviously, the transit department took over the management of the construction process. Well, during that part, what a lot of people don't realize is there, was, there were conversations being had by economic development and people in the city basically today, how do we help the businesses that are being impacted? How do we make sure that these businesses can survive the best, the best way possible? A lot of people don't realize is that according to the state constitution, it's not legal for any city, for the city to financially assist any individual business. So it kind of puts you in a tough situation. What do we do? And that's kind of where the SBRC was born. And again, we're, in short, we're a small group of business consultants that have a number of different specialties. And our job is to go out there every day to see what we can do to help these businesses stay afloat and uh, during the, the midst of the construction, then of course do better once the construction is done. To give you a kind of a, an idea of the gamut of the work that we do, we've done anything from uh, helping restaurants create new menus or revamp the existing menu. We've helped Spanish-speaking tire shop owners work with the planning department to figure out their zoning issues for their property. Um, we've helped businesses with websites, SEO. We've helped people with exit strategies who have been wanting to figure out how to close or sell their business. And uh, we've actually had somebody on the team that had to help source goat meat from overseas for an African restaurant. <laughs> so to give you an idea, there is really nothing that we don't do um, on a daily basis. But we do it because we believe in the city. Like many of you guys here, we believe in Albuquerque. We believe in what Albuquerque represents and has to offer. And so that's why we go out there every day we do this work. Every single one of us own another business and work when we go home at night on those businesses. But we believe in the city. So, you know, that's why we do the work that we do. What was interesting, however, in, is in the midst of this project, in the midst of going out here working with these businesses, is we ended up learning quite a few different things, which highlighted, I think not only some opportunities, some potentials to be able to really take this city, I guess, to the next place as far as productivity, but it highlighted some of the issues. Uh, so with that being said, I'm gonna transition to kind of really the more, the more of the focus of this conversation. Let me guess you guys this. Most people, whether you guys agree or disagree with the art project, we can all agree that the construction has had an impact on, on the businesses. SBRC stays really neutral as far as our opinions on that. But here, I'm, I'm going to pose a question to everybody. And the question is, how many of you guys think that there was an issue in this city economically before construction started? Most people can agree with that, right? And during the construction, that's something that not a lot of people address, but it certainly is an issue. And I'm really doing bad with these slides. I have some, so I'm going to try to catch up to where I am. I'm going to try to... What do I do? Down arrow. Up, down, page down. Click on the clicker. So you guys are going to look at my name, and I'm going to wing the rest of this. <laughs> So here's a couple of, so what I did and what I was trying to pull up in these slides is I just did a little bit of research to try to kind of find out where um, the, oh, go to the second slide, the one with the numbers. This one shows us we're being productive. This is a little bit of a snapshot of our dashboard. So this gives you an idea since the, the beginning of construction and a little bit before the construction, some of the things that we've been doing out there on the ground. We've worked with, um, we've had 
over 1,500 interactions with businesses. Um, we've connected with 346 different businesses along the corridor. We have an active, ongoing relationship with 224 of those businesses, um, and about 160 of them are implementing our ideas. Um, and that is spread across, be, be, really it's between four of the different consultants that are out there on the ground. Um, so between four of us, 350 clients that we work with, and that doesn't count the ones that, we've, you know, that we deal with on a much more limited basis. But that kind of gives you an idea of what we've been able to do. We work in many different categories. That being said, when I started looking into doing some research as far as where was the city before all of this started, I pulled a, a couple of statistics. So this one was an actual... Uh, an article that was done by the Albuquerque Journal, uh, I believe it was 2015. And it basically says, as you guys can see, while Duke City has some signs of economic improvement, a new ranking suggests that we aren't growing as much as we would like. A new report by WalletHub ranks Albuquerque 404th out of 515 U.S. cities. Uh, and those cities were, um, and that was an overall economic study. It goes into a little bit more detail. Um, another study, excuse me, another article that uh, was done by Wallet Hub as well that says that had that New Mexico had the fifth worst economy in the country, according to Wallet Hub, and that the it was only doing better than Maine, West Virginia, and a couple of different things. So, why do I bring this up? The bottom line is, is when I was looking through these statistics, reading all of the numbers on Albuquerque, what it made very, very clear is that there's an underlying issue that happened before construction, happened before all of this. And that begins to raise the question is, what is the issue? What's the underlying thing that's going on in this city that's caused us to struggle so much, a place with so much culture, so much personality, so much talent? Why are we struggling in this way? And I think what we learned out here with these businesses, being on the ground with them every day, began to highlight some of the things that, be, that I've learned are the common denominators as to why this may be. So I'm going to turn this into a question is, maybe if people can shout up a couple of things, if you had to pick maybe the top three things that you think are having, what are the things that are impacting this city and affecting us from thriving economically? Any thoughts? Overall vision of what individual businesses want their business to be. Okay, vision. Okay, anybody else? Crime. Crime? Access to capital. Access to capital. Brain drain. Brain drain? We educate people or they leave. Okay. Anybody else? No industry. No industry. Um, so, a number of these things are actually fairly accurate. One of the things that we learn when you look back over the statistics, industry has kind of been a common underlying factor in Albuquerque. It's changed. It's certainly had its impact. Um, but if I had to narrow it down to the three most common things that we deal with now, I would say crime is a big one. One is the... I guess the support and the drive for the entrepreneurship and the, be able, the ability to get to your point and to other people's points to take a concept and actually push it all the way through to execution. And then the very last one, which it hurts me to say this, but it was probably one of the more prevalent things that we encountered out here on the streets was complacency. One of the things that we found in this community working, our, our corridor stems from Louisiana all the way down to Coors. As anybody who lives here knows, there's a lot of different communities. You have Edo, you have University, you have Knob Hill, you got the International District, you have downtown, west downtown, and then the west side. A lot of different areas of central, all of which have a different personality. One of the things that you find, I worked primarily down in the west central area, past the river, I worked downtown, and there's this common complaint about Knob Hill gets a lot of attention, Knob Hill gets a lot of focus. And as we're working with these businesses, we realize maybe there's a reason to that. One of the things I'll put out there, because a lot of people have heard about it, we get a lot of questions about this, is a loan program. Some people have heard that there's a loan program that was created to assist the businesses that are out here on Central. Well, the SBRC, in partnership with a number of different agencies and people, essentially created a loan program to help the businesses that were on Central that needed assistance. It you know, wasn't going to get them rich, but it was just meant as a bridge to supplement some of the loss that they've experienced. Now, I don't know about you guys, but if I own a business on Central, I'm down because of construction and I'm hurting, if you come to me with the opportunity to get free money, I'm going to jump all over it, right? And I'm assuming everybody in here probably would. What I can tell you is this, as unfortunate as this is, we had over $700,000 available for businesses across the corridor. Almost nobody applied. The people that did apply, we can't, I can't count how many applications I put out there, and people just never responded. 
never gave back, never got the information that was necessary. And this, among other things, began to really, really highlight that while people are busy and they're focused on other things, there's just an extreme lack of follow through when it comes to a lot of the things that are necessary to become successful in business. And it's funny how that's become prevalent. A lot of the businesses in Knob Hill, which is one of the primary areas we've seen successful success in those uh, uh, with those loans, with getting those applications. These are people that are a little bit more forward-looking. They're a little bit more proactive. They're a little bit more, you know, instead of making commitments and not following through, they just do what they say they were going to do. And I'm pretty sure everybody's heard the phrase, the land of manana, right? That's a very common theme in Albuquerque that I think we need to change. So why do I say all of this? What's the purpose of me bringing all of this together? Is in these same conversations, the same articles and studies that talked about the negativity of um, the economic situation in Albuquerque, there was a very common underlying thing. So if you take those same studies and you look at the top cities, four out of the five top cities, whether you're looking at Wallet Hub's um, breakdown, whether you're looking at Forbes, any of the business, uh, I guess, studies that were done about businesses, there's a handful of cities that were always at the top, the San Antonio's, the Austin's, some cities in California, and there was a common denominator in pretty much every single city that made them success, excuse me, successful. One of them was tech, right? The other one was a strong focus on entrepreneurship and making sure that there was a business community where people could work together and then support from the city to make entrepreneurship happen. When I saw that part, that's what really made me think. And it really brought together everything that I'm saying up here. It brought together what we've learned on the ground and really just kind of rein it reinforced my excitement about the work that we're doing in this city because it shows a lot of what's possible. Because if there's anything that anybody in this room can agree is that New Mexico has a huge tech focus, and there's a lot of things supporting that tech focus. There's a building across the street that represents the support that's coming in a number of different capacities towards encouraging and trying to cultivate entrepreneurship in this city and to the people that are going through college, the people that want to start a business so they don't get educated and leave. So it, just, it was funny that all of the things that make the top cities in this country successful exist here in Albuquerque. They just exist at a small level. And so the, the, the biggest thing that I have found working out here, and I know Howie from Yelp is uh, going to talk on this a little bit as well because we've just learned so much being out here on the ground, is that there are a group of people that are in this city that believe that bigger is possible. And they're doing the work to start to create this, this, the domino effect of change that's going to be necessary to take this city from where it was to where it needs to be. I believe a lot of those people are represented in this room because obviously the people that are in this room are entrepreneurs or you work in a job that requires that entrepreneurial spirit because if you don't have the mindset that says, I recognize that there's obstacles in front of me when I go out to go to work every day, I recognize that there's going to be traffic, there's going to be issues, but regardless of all of those things, I still believe in the vision not only of the work that I do on a daily basis, but I believe in this city it's going to begin to start that change. And we see that with the SOMOS event that's taking place this weekend, all of the other events that are taking place on Saturday, the groups that we've worked with throughout the city. Many of you guys know, some of you may not, but there is just a collective group of entrepreneurs, business people, and even representatives from the city that are motivated and passionate every single day about investing and doing whatever it takes to make the city successful. Now, the reality is we are coming from a little bit of a deficit, so we're going to have to outwork the other cities. We're going to have to do a little bit better, but I think it's capable. You know, I was in the military. I've been fortunate. I've traveled through most of the states. I've been to a lot of different cities. I've been outside of the country, and I can honestly say, even though I grew up here, Albuquerque is one of the most unique places I've ever been. It has some of the best culture that I've ever seen, and some of the smartest, most capable people I have ever encountered come from this place. I mean, look at some of the most some of the billionaires that are out there right now. Many of them came from Albuquerque, and that says something. I don't know if it's something in the water or what it is, but there's something special about Albuquerque, and I believe that right now we're at a position where if we're willing to come together at this as a collective, as we are right now, collaborate with the people that are in this community. You know, we had a conversation yesterday, and it's a common thing we talk about, is that there's, as much as there's support in this city, there's also this element of competition. 
And it's almost like people are so busy fighting for crumbs, they don't realize that there's a buffet table right above that that nobody's taking advantage of. And it's available. It's continue, that table's continuing to get set. And I'm excited because as we worked out here with these businesses, from Louisiana to Central, 300 plus businesses, and regardless of the struggles, regardless of the shortcomings, there is a thing where people believe in the city. And I think if we're willing to work together and do the things that, that are necessary to take the elements that make all of the other cities great, that already exist here, we start to make those uh, a little bit more visible. Albuquerque will not only be a force in this country, but it, I think it can be a force worldwide. It can, be, it can be a name worldwide that's known and recognized for its culture and what it exemplifies. You know, and I, and I, I guess in short, in closing, I'm excited that that's the case. Every conversation I have every day just reinforces that. So I was excited at the opportunity to talk here because I know the people in this room represent that. So I'm really, really interested at seeing what conversations can be had, even starting from here to people who are already in the community doing these things. Let's collaborate. Let's start working together and take this city to what we all know that it's capable of becoming. I think that's it. Am I good? Okay.